All right, this video is star number three for the cell cycle part two. Remember, you are taking notes on the actual paper itself on the note paper. Alrighty, the first section is going to be for photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Um, the first picture that we see right here is going to be for photosynthesis. Uh, remember, photo means light, synthesis means to build or to create. Uh, this process happens in eukaryotic cells. Why eukaryotic? Because it's occurring inside of an organelle. The organelle is called the chloroplast. So in this picture, it's those little small green ones. That is the chloroplast that you see. Um, there are two parts to this reaction. The first part is called the light dependent. If you depend on something, then obviously you need it to happen. So light dependent requires light. Um, where does it occur in the chloroplast? There are these little stack looking things called thylakoids and that's where this occurs. So light dependent happens in the thylakoids. What happens for light dependent? Light strikes the thylakoid. That solar energy gets converted into ATP and NADPH. NADPH is an electron carrier. So it'll take those hydrogens that it just pulled off of water and it will store them for the time being. And we'll use them in a moment when we get to light independent. So water is being broken apart using solar energy in the thylakoids and it's releasing oxygen gas. Alrighty, the second part of photosynthesis is light independent. Light independent happens in something called the stroma, which is the space where there is no thylakoid. So it's like the empty space inside the chloroplast. Um, what happens is, we also call this the Calvin cycle. What happens is the energy we got from breaking water in the first step is going to be used to take carbon dioxide, break off the carbons, combine them with hydrogens, and make glucose. So if we were to look at the whole reaction, we take in carbon dioxide plus water plus solar energy. Those are my reactants. My products are going to be oxygen gas and C6H1206. Remember C6H1206 is glucose. The second part in the second picture is of cellular respiration. Uh, for cellular respiration, this process happens in both plants and animals. So what happens for plants is, sure, they make the glucose, but can they break it down to directly use it? No, they have to uh, first make it, and then they have to do cellular respiration to actually get the energy and use it. So both plants and animals are doing cellular respiration. We do cellular respiration all the time. We do not do photosynthesis. We are not green. Alrighty, um, so how does cellular respiration occur? Cellular respiration happens in the organelle called the mitochondria. So again, we're looking at eukaryotic cells. Um, the first step of this process is called glycolysis. Remember, lysis always means to break. Glyco is like glucose. So what we're doing here is we're taking glucose. We're taking glucose and we're breaking it into, uh, basically we're breaking in half. Uh, this process happens in the cytoplasm of the cell. It does not happen in the mitochondria. And remember, our glucose molecules look like this. And so we're literally just taking it and we're snapping it in half. So it's like me breaking it right there. So I'm going to get this molecule and this molecule. And that's what we're going to use in our second step, which is called Krebs cycle. So again, glycolysis, I broke the glucose and now I'm going to use it in the second step, which is called Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle happens in the middle of the mitochondria. We call that area the matrix. And what is the Krebs cycle doing? Uh, the Krebs cycle is basically going to be using those two half sugars, those two half glucoses, and I'm going to be producing two ATP. Um, how do I power this cycle? Go back to glycolysis. Glycolysis also produces an electron carrier. Uh, it actually produces a couple of them that we're going to be using in this process. So NADH, we're going to be using that in the Krebs cycle, and also glycolysis made two ATP. Um, okay, so after the Krebs cycle, I've uh, fully, fully broken down those half sugars, and basically I'm left with a bunch of hydrogen molecules. Those hydrogen molecules are going to build up in the membrane right here. So there's an inner membrane and an outer membrane of your mitochondria. So those hydrogens are building up on the inner membrane. I'm going to push them in and out of this inner membrane, okay? So I'm going to push them in and out, and every time I do that, it's going to create energy. So every time along this inner membrane, I'm pushing hydrogens out. That creates about 34 ATP. This process is called the electron transport chain. Um, and again, electrons, it's referring to hydrogens. So I'm moving hydrogens around. Well, every time I move hydrogens, I want to use some of the oxygen that I breathed in to get rid of those hydrogens so that I can pump more. So I'm producing water. Alrighty, so this process is I'm breathing in oxygen. That helps me get rid of the hydrogen here. I'm taking in glucose. Obviously, when we eat food, we take in glucose. 
and I'm doing I'm breaking those down to produce carbon dioxide I'm breathing out so I'm breathing out carbon dioxide in the Krebs I'm making water I'm doing that in electron transport and I'm making ATP that's the goal how much ATP how much energy I'm making about 38 to uh, 34 to 38 ATP every single time uh, and this basically helps to power our body ATP is what we actually use to power ourselves what's the structure of ATP ATP is called adenosine triphosphate meaning it has three phosphate groups attached to it every single time I break a bond to a phosphate that gives me energy so my goal is to make as much ATP as I can so I can use it for my muscles and cells later on but next part of your notes is the cell cycle um, remember the cell cycle is basically how I produce more cells um, there are two major parts to the cell cycle interphase um, interphase and then mitosis and cytokinesis is technically the last one so let's go ahead and look at how this goes uh, we start with g1 in g1 what i'm going to be doing is copying uh, my organelles and this is what your cell looks like okay then i'm going to go through s s is very important because i'm actually replicating my dna i'm making two copies so notice in the first picture right here i've got one blue chromosome and one red one now in this picture i've got them in x's so remember chromosomes are actually single lines when I go through S file, or sorry, S phase, I actually copy them into the little duplicated. This is called a homologous chromosome. This whole thing. Each half is called a chromatid. Okay, so each half of my copied chromosome is called a chromatid. The whole thing is called a chromosome. And of course, this is called a chromosome. Alrighty, um, so. G1, copy organelles. S, I copy DNA. And then I go into G2. What happens in G2? I double check. I go through checkpoints to ensure that nothing is wrong. And then I actually enter into mitosis. Remember, the stages of mitosis are going to be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And then lastly, I get to cytokinesis. So if I ask you about the cell cycle, the phases are interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. Those are the big ones. Um, so some mnemonic devices to help you remember. Go, Santa, go, Merry Christmas. G1, S, G2, M, cytokinesis. So go, Santa, go, Merry Christmas. And that'll help you remember the order of the whole cell cycle. If I ask you what is the order of just uh, mitosis, for mitosis, please marry Anna today will help you remember that. Alrighty, what do I get at the end of the cell cycle? Why am I even doing this? I'm getting out two identical cells. I'm getting out two identical cells, um, and the important thing about these cells is they're going to be diploid, which means they're going to have a full set of mom and dad chromosomes. I didn't do anything to the chromosome number, okay? So they're going to get a full set. Uh, let's look at mitosis itself. Um, so again, remember that's please marry Anna today, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Um, so for mitosis, I start with a diploid cell. So it's got a mom, and, a mom and dad copy. I go through DNA replication. They actually make the little X shapes. And then I go through the, the parts of mitosis. So this is going to be meta. Remember, meta, middle. So meta is going to be middle. Um, so all of my chromosomes line up in the middle. Then we go to anaphase. My chromosomes get pulled apart. And then lastly, so sorry, my sister chromatids. My sister chromatids are getting pulled apart. My chromosomes are my sister chromatids. And then in the very last part, um, uh, in telophase and cytokinesis, I get two cells, and they are identical. Alrighty, um, there's one thing I want to bring to your attention. My toe is growing, so for mitosis, it's for growth. That's the purpose of this process. It's to do it for growth and development. In other words, how do babies get larger? How do you get taller? It's not just your cells are stretching. It's that you're actually making exact uh, identical copies, and that's how you do growth. Um, one more way is mitosis in my toes, meiosis in my ovaries, or meiosis in my ovaries, whichever way you pronounce that. And we'll come to meiosis in one second. Okay, so our last section is meiosis. Uh, meiosis, its purpose is to produce four haploid gametes. Remember, a gamete is a sex cell. So the purpose is to produce sex cells here. Um, I start with a diploid. So I start with a cell that has mom and dad copy. I'm going to copy my DNA into little X's. I'm going to do something called crossing over. So if we look up here at this picture right here, notice the blue and the red ones, they're identical. The mom and dad copy. They're going to swap some parts, and now I've got unique 
chromosomes. This will be very important because the purpose of meiosis is to produce genetic diversity. So crossing over, swapping chromosome parts helps to give me that diversity. Um, when does that happen? That happens in meiosis one, particularly it happens in prophase one. Okay, alrighty, so going back to it, uh, I start with a diploid cell, I go through the S phase, I, in prophase one, I do crossing over, then we go to metaphase one where they line up in the middle, anaphase one where my chromosomes uh, get pulled apart, and then telophase one, uh, and cytokinesis, where I actually form two cells. These cells at this point are haploid. We just write that as N. So notice this only has one chromosome, where the original cell had two chromosomes. So this is haploid. It only has half the DNA. Uh, the next part is going to be obviously metaphase, and then they just show you anaphase two right here in this picture, where I pull my chromosome apart. This is my sister chromatids. And lastly, telophase two cytokinesis. I end up with four haploid cells. So the whole big thing here is you have to remember I start with a mom and dad copy. In meiosis one, my um, my homologous chromosomes get pulled apart, and then in meiosis two, my sister chromatids get pulled apart. So I only end up with half.